Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matty with the Toaster Bros. And today we have a serious throwback number for you. $600 gaming PC in 2021. You may think it's impossible, but it actually is possible. And the goal here is to make a build that's a little bit better or a decent amount better than just going with a traditional APU and then being able to upgrade it later on. And I think we have a pretty good option here. But before we get into this build, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by ASRock and their Z590 Phantom Gaming ITX Thunderbolt 4 motherboard featuring killer double shot pro networking that allows you to use both killer Wi-Fi and Ethernet at the same time for maximum throughput, Hyper M.2 Gen 4 support with a built-in heatsink for better cooling, and dual graphics outputs for those running integrated Intel graphics. If you're looking to build an awesome mini ITX gaming PC, then look no further than the Z590 Phantom Gaming ITX Thunderbolt 4 motherboard from as rock. Check the link down below to learn more. So the best part about this is that we'll have links in the description down below where you can get all these parts. The only thing you might have a little bit of trouble finding is the RX 560. And what I mean by trouble is trouble finding at the right price. You're gonna find them all over eBay, but some of them are probably gonna be like $300 plus. Well, we recommend spending 200 or less. 200 or less is not great, obviously, because just at the beginning of the year, we did a $500 build guide with a 570 and the exact same CPU. And now this is a $600 build guide with a well lesser GPU. So it just goes to show the market's not great. But as I mentioned, if this performs better, which it should, than just an APU like 3200G, 3400G out of the box, in theory, you can upgrade this graphics card when the market gets better and you have a good basis for an awesome gaming PC. So how about I waste any more time and talk about each individual part how it makes up this PC build. Big thanks to PC Bros, our company, for giving us this i3-10100. You can still get these readily available on Amazon, Newegg, eBay, even Micro Center if you wanna to go to one. Uh, for around 120 bucks, they also have the F variant, which is non-integrated graphics, which we have a graphics card, so that's not a big deal. Just get whichever one's the cheapest, basically. Four core, eight thread, very upgradable. You could really handle up to like a 3060 with this i3 with no problems. No problemos? No problemos. Now for the motherboard, we have the B460M DS3H, which is a really good motherboard. It's actually the V2, which I have not even seen yet, but it's a micro ATX board to fit inside this micro ATX case. I will say if you can get an H410 for a lot cheaper or an H510, go with that because this is a locked processor. You can't overclock it or anything. We're just using stock cooling. So really you could get away with just an H410, but sometimes these can be had for like 70 to $80 if you can find them, of course. Now for RAM, we have two sticks at eight gigs a piece, so 16 gigs total of only 3000 megahertz RAM. We have used this stuff so many times because on Amazon and often new, I get some of the cheapest 3000 megahertz RAM that actually has custom heat sinks on it. Usually it's like 77 99, um, 3600 and, and you know, stuff like that's really hard to find. It's really expensive. And also you're not really gonna be running, you know, anything crazy, like anything over 3000 megahertz on this motherboard. So get 3000 or less because it's cheap and it makes sense. Now for storage, we like our M.2 drives. This is an NVMe M.2 SSD. It's the Western Digital SN 550. We really recommend going with Western Digital, Crucial, Corsair, Team Group, Adata. They all have NVMe SSDs. They're all pretty cheap, um, just depending on the time. Even Inland, they sell on Amazon and you can go to Micro Center and pick one up. So we highly recommend going NVMe M.2 SSD. All right, quick story time. This is an RX 560 4 gig. I actually picked this thing up on eBay for well around $160 to $170. I think I paid like $170 after tax and shipping and everything. Jackson looks really weird with the camera right now. I wish you guys could see this. He's going really sick on mode with it. But story is I bought a bunch of graphics cards on AliExpress because, well, they were really affordable at the time and the 560 was one of them. The 560 we got showed up not working. All the other cards are fine, but the 560 didn't. We're trying to get that replaced. But in the meantime, I managed to find one for the exact same price on eBay. So that's where Jackson says it might be hard to find this, but if you do go the AliExpress route, which again, I'm a little skeptical now because I did buy one that was used and doesn't work very well, you can get them for the price that we did for the budget of this build. So we'll leave some links down below, affiliate links, and do your best to just shop around. You may be able to find a good deal on it, but I think it would be a pretty good option. Now for the power supply, we have the good old EVGA 500 watts uh, BR, which is a 500 watt power supply, 80 plus bronze. Uh, we love these power supplies because one, the cables are really nice and 500 watts is enough for this PC build, more than enough actually, because this doesn't even require external power, which is kind of crazy. Um, but this thing right here is a good power supply, good value, but this is a reliable power supply we have used numerous times and it is pretty good for the money. 
Now this is another Amazon RGB case special. This is the Maraval TW7. We love getting these cheap RGB cases because one, you get RGB and well, they're, they're kind of cool and we just like showcasing them. This is a micro ATX version that uh, had some problems in shipping. It looks like the uh, RGB controller is kind of just dangling in there, but shouldn't be a problem. We'll give it a proper little review once we uh, put this thing together and see how it performs. But I think there's enough room for extra fans, has some decent airflow in the front. And really this isn't gonna be a super power consuming build. It's not going to get very hot. So pretty much any case you get is going to be fine. If you want to cheap out on that and get below $600, you easily can. But uh, yeah, we like our RGB. How are we going to build this PC and see how she performs? All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we have this $600 gaming PC all booted up and ready to go, let's talk about some benchmarks real quick. Now, we decided to test this PC in a couple of titles, those being Fortnite, Call of Duty Cold War, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Apex Legends, and Borderlands 3. Now, first up in Fortnite on performance mode, we start to see where the i3-10100 starts to stretch its legs, getting over 100 plus FPS when we actually dive into the game. When building this PC, the main concept in mind was to get a basis where you could easily upgrade this thing with a better GPU and also I wanted it to perform a little bit better than a 3200G PC which I think I easily exceeded that in games like Fortnite, CSGO, Rainbow Six Siege which will be pretty much super easy to run at over 100 plus FPS and actually have a pretty decent high refresh rate gaming experience. The RX 560 is not a great GPU but it is better than integrated Vega graphics and any other integrated option that a lot of people are recommending on the market and right now if you're going to buy one of those systems new given the fact that 3200Gs are kind of hard to come by, 3400Gs are kind of hard to come by, you're probably going to be spending close to $600 to make that happen. So the RX 560 might be a decent option if you could pick one up at the price point that we did. Next up in Call of Duty Cold War, we start to see the limitations of that RX 560, where we have to run on low settings at 80% resolution scale at 1080p to get an average of around 60 FPS. Again, Call of Duty Cold War is a very demanding and very GPU demanding game, and the RX 560 has its limitations. It's not going to be able to run the latest AAA titles at 60 plus FPS most of the time. Some games you can run on lower settings and have a decent gaming experience, but you're probably going to be looking at wanting to run at like 60 1600 by 900 or 720p to get a great experience so this is one of the major trade-offs but do keep in mind the other alternative like a 3200g or 3400g would not run this at all well it could run it but it's going to be a far worse experience with vega 8 or even vega 11 graphics Next up in Shadow the Tomb Raider on low settings, we start to see again where AAA titles are not great for the RX 560, but we do end up getting an average of 41 FPS. I'm not going to butter up this PC and say it's the greatest thing we've ever made, but given the market, getting a 560 and pairing it with an i3, which is super upgradable to something like a, well, I don't know, you could buy a U 1660 Super when the market gets better. You could even buy a 3060 if you really wanted to and pair with the i3. That wouldn't be too ridiculous in all honesty, um, and you would get a massive jump in performance compared to something like the 3200G and 3400G, you're getting less performance now and then when you add a new GPU, you're going to be limited to what GPU can add because while they are decent CPUs, they are kind of limited. 
Next up in Apex Legends on medium low settings, we average around 60 FPS. Again, on this game, if you run on lower settings, maybe drop the resolution down to 1600 by 900, you could get a locked 60 FPS experience with that 560. But once again, the 560 is holding us back just a little bit from being able to play every game we want, but it is still a pretty decent gaming experience overall. And last but certainly not least, Borderlands 3 on low settings. Once again, we start to see where the 560 is struggling a little bit, but keep in mind, Borderlands 3 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider are very demanding benchmarks, and we ended up averaging 45 FPS. So in conclusion, I am happy with this PC. Some of the numbers in AAA titles are lower than you might like, and if that's the case, you probably should just save your money and wait till the market gets better or go out and buy a console. But given the market right now, getting a 560 with this i3 for around $600 is not too bad. You could go the pre-built route, which we've done a lot of videos on the channel, but for those who are really diehard and want to build their own PC and know which component's going to be in their system, this might be one of your best options right now to actually get into that space. So now that I've finished the benchmarking section of today's video, how we're gonna bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. All right guys, so overall this PC is, well, really good for the price in 2021. We will say though, that RX 560 does leave a little bit to be desired. The i3 really could handle up to like a 2060 with no problems, that four core eight thread uh, really comes in clutch for gaming. Uh, but overall, this is better than just an APU system. You could get a 3200G or 3400G system at PC Bros. Um, but obviously you're gonna get a little bit less performance with just the APU. So overall, we wanted to make something that as Jackson mentioned is better than an APU system and is much more upgradable because when you slap in like a high-end GPU with like a 3200G or 3400G, you might get some bottlenecks. The i3 is technically a better CPU than both of those, so you can technically have a better upgrade path in the future, but it all comes down to you being able to find this GPU, and we'll try to leave links in the description down below, which will be affiliate links, and they will help us out, so you can uh, try your best at getting this graphics card and all the other parts. All the other parts will be easy to get. It's the graphics card you might have to do a little hunting for. Be patient. And one last word would just be about the case. The case is actually really nice. I love seeing this feature on a cheaper case. Of course, this case might not even be around by the time we make this video because it is one of those kind of random like copycat cases where there's probably like 20 other companies that have the same case. But as of right now, this is a good deal being around $60 to RGB fans tempered side glass, uh, room for more fans, even a 240 millimeter radiator up top, which I don't know how well it would fit, but looks like it supports it. So overall, it's a really good case for the money, and uh, yeah, we like checking out all these really cheap Amazon cases with RGB because normally they present a lot of good value for money and allow you to put more money into the components that actually improve FPS. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We'll have some awesome new budget builds coming up and also some really awesome high-end builds, you know, if you have some extra money coming up as well. Make sure you check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Bros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Hey, we have a really awesome community over on Discord where we are partnered as well, and we have some new stuff coming that'll be really cool, potentially a PC marketplace too. And if you don't wanna miss out on anything Toasty Bros, Discord is the best way to do that because sometimes notifications for YouTube and Twitch don't work very well. You'll get notifications when we go live on Twitch and when every video is uploaded. So join the Discord, talk to people about computers, and have fun. Yeah, that's it, goodbye. That's it, you marvelous bastard.